Okay, so I am here in the DC booth with Nicole Maines, writer of Dreamer. Uh, I did it! Bad Dream, a Dreamer story. Hey, I mean, as long as people are talking about it, Absolutely. I, I don't personally care which, which order it goes and just buy it. <laughs> so congratulations Thank on the so book much. to begin with. Thank you. Uh, I'm excited to dive into more of Dreamer's origin. How did this come about for you? Where did this book start from? Yeah, so I went to DC... Um, and was telling them, of course, Streamer had originated on the Supergirl series. And I had told them, you know, this is a really spectacular character who yeah. is groundbreaking and means a lot for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we should continue her. She should have a legacy in the comic books. She should um, get to live on. And I went to them, and, I, and this is an illustration of truly how much I did not understand how <laughs> comic books work is I came in with a whole pitch and a whole story and I was like, this is for an ongoing, mind yep. you. And I was like, I just think someone should write this story. I don't know why I, I thought that <laughs> someone else was going to write a story that I came up with. Yeah. Um, but they were, and that I was first off asking for an ongoing right away. Having why not? Never, why not? Having really never done anything uh, with <laughs> DC Publishing ever. Um, and they said, okay, well... Um, that's a lot. <laughs> but they were very gracious and they listened to my pitch and they liked it. But they were saying, you know, before we get into all of that, let's, we have this young adult graphic novel line mm. that's really popping off and we're looking for more content for that. And we don't have a story about sisters. Yeah. Could you write one? And of course, my first response was, oh, no, you want me to write it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you don't understand. I say the words that other people write. Um, but then uh, COVID hit and I wasn't doing anything and it's, it sort of s started into this quarantine project that has since grew and yeah. now I've been writing it for three, almost four years and I'm ready to never see it again. <laughs> I want to say it's my baby. I love it so much. I wake yeah. up every morning so excited. I might buy a coffee just to burn it. <laughs> Film that. Yeah. If you do. Film yeah, that. Exactly. With, with this kind of diving into parts of her origin story that we've not seen before, yeah. or we've not read before, was that something that you had already had in your mind when you were inhabiting that character? Were you kind of thinking about things just to fill in the blanks for yourself yeah. while, while you were being her? Yeah. Well, this was about to, this was to give her a whole new origin story because, of course, now it's following her as a 15-year-old girl yeah. growing up in this town. I've taken pieces that people are a little bit familiar with and just expanded on everything, changed some things, and so it's entirely new. I think there are some things uh, in the story that, that folks who are familiar with Dreamer yeah. will recognize, but it's accessible to people who have never heard of this character, who, who have no prior experience yeah. or history with her. And that was really, really fun, getting to just expand on all of this. I think. The most exciting was getting to expand on Naltor as yeah. a planet and, and getting, because going into the comics and going into the Legion of Superheroes comics, we had a little bit of information about Naltor. We knew that everybody saw the future. We knew that they were highly advanced. We knew that they had a high seer. That was kind of it. There yeah. wasn't a lot of socio political anything going on. So, me being the lore loving, world building nerd that I am. I, I took a page out of my brother's <laughs> book, who's a, a, an amazing DM. He does Dungeons oh, and Dragons wow. all the time. And so he has like just pages and pages and journals of world building stuff. And so I was like, I could do that. So I, I started expanding on Naltor, and that was one of the things that was the most fun. And one of the things I'm most excited for in this story is, is the new way that Naltor is starting to be presented. That's really exciting. And obviously, I mean, you've already mentioned it. Dreamer was a land, or is a landmark character. Yeah. This, was, this was a watershed moment for for superheroes in general. Mm -hmm. And we've, you know, we've seen her sh struggle with being an outsider for being an alien. We've seen yeah. her struggle with being a trans woman. Homegirl got a lot of identities. <laughs> she, go her. Go her. Come on, intersectionality. <laughs> how do you distill? Maybe not distill. Maybe that's not the right word. But how do you how do you bring that to a YA audience? Yeah. You know, honestly, head on and just talking about the issues in their entirety. Yeah. Um, I think especially for a young adult audience and even younger audiences, I'm a big proponent of K-12 
kids and, and young adults are way smarter than we've been giving them credit for, and they are capable of understanding these larger conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Because these conversations, when you look at them, aren't really that large. We're still talking about the same principles that we all learned in kindergarten. You know, treat others the way you want to be treated, yes, exactly. the golden rule. Uh, say please and thank you, wash your hands, look both ways when you cross the street. Like, and my book deals with all of that. <laughs> um, but this, it, it is something that I touch on a lot. And, and I think through the process of writing this book, the world has changed so yeah. much. And we have seen such a sharp increase in anti-LGBTQ, specifically anti-trans sentiment and legislation. And so as I've been writing this, all of this has been just occupying my mind and, and I've been living in this environment and it sort of started to bleed into the book. Yeah. And it became a catharsis for me. I was me. literally just about to say it, it, it must have been yeah, cathartic. It, it gave me an opportunity to address some of these issues and having a queer cast, having Mia run away to Metropolis and meeting all of these queer girls her age who've been through similar things. Yeah having them get the opportunity to say all of the things that have been flying around in my mind. And it's truly just me having a conversation with myself. Um, but it, it was very cathartic, and I'm excited for folks to read it. I mm. think that queer readers are going to be, feel very validated by it, and I think uh, cisgender heterosexual readers, uh, regardless of you know if they're allies, if they don't know anything about the communities, I think this is a good you know, dip your toe in to yeah. these waters and, and get to experience queer culture and, get to, and, and under, start, begin to understand the conversations that are going on in queer circles uh, in a really accessible, fun, superhero-y way. Let's just talk about the visuals for a second. So you've got Rye, Hickman. who oh is God. doing Let the artwork. talk about Rye Hickman. <laughs> Rye is amazing. And I am obsessed with everything they've been doing. And every time they send in new pages, I am so excited. And they started drawing the villain recently. And she is everything that my, like, young, like, late 90s, early 2000s, like, little gay self loved. Like, <laughs> growing up with, the, you know, just like the oversexed, yeah. sultry, I'm bad for the sake of being bad, like, goth girl. Love it. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, Rise is spectacular. The As way a, they do hair. Oh, really? Their ha oh. Just the hair is my favorite part of the comic. <laughs> that's amazing. It's, that's a random thing, but like the hair always looks amazing. As a new writer as well, uh, for you, seeing that come to life for the first time must be just incredible. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it's... Yeah, and this is really spectacular because it's my, really my first long-form yeah. content that I've done. But of course, I've, I've seen this process a couple of times now. I've done, of course, DC Pride. Yes. I've done Lazarus Planet. I did Son of Kal-El. So I'm a little familiar with that process of getting... It doesn't stop being <laughs> awesome. No, I can imagine. Like, well, it's new artists every time. And, yeah. And another one of my favorite things about writing for Dreamer is getting to see new artists' interpretation of her, getting to see the new ways they draw the suit, getting to see the new ways they draw the hair and the, and the powers. And it's just been really exciting getting to see her take on other forms yeah. of you know, different artist styles. And it's... Awesome. And you've been with her for five years now. I know. Which is incredible. Almost six. It's, it's mad. Yeah. I, I don't want to say ownership because that feels like the wrong word, but do you feel protected? Well, and legally it's the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As you, here we sit at the DC booth. <laughs> I own nothing. <laughs> do you feel protective? How do you yeah. feel about her after being on this really huge journey with her? She's my baby. Yeah. I love her. So, I mean, it's... She's my baby, but also she is me, but yeah, I am yeah. her. <laughs> um, we are inseparable. Yes, exactly. It feels a little bit like an Elvira situation at this point. <laughs> Who am I talking to? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I am very, very protective of her, but I'm so fortunate to have been working with DC and have had them be as supportive of this character. Yeah. Well, not, no one's as supportive of her as I am, <laughs> but... But to see them really rally behind her and, yeah. and asking for her more and more, including her in Lazarus Planet, giving her the opportunity to do more stuff that I can't talk about right now. Um, it's just been really awesome to see. And it, it feels like for a while I was sort of 
beating this drum by myself. Yeah. Now I look behind me and there's a whole orchestra and I'm like, oh, well this is nice and so much easier. <laughs> this will be the Dreamer booth next year. Oh, absolutely. The D stands for Dreamer. Yeah. Dreamer content. Yeah, exactly. Boom. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much. I can't wait to read the book. It's it was lovely to meet you. so awesome. Thank you so much, Neil. Thank you. Thanks for watching, Super Friends. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button just down below and hit the bell so that you can get notified whenever we release brand new videos. In fact, there's two more waiting for you to watch right here below. So what are you waiting for? Why not click play?